Hey guys, welcome back to another Facebook Live at the Virginia Living Museum. My name is Robin Sefker. I am the bird and mammal curator, and this is Megan Ledoux. She's one of our Hello. bird and mammal keepers. And we're here today to talk to you guys about our big brown bats. Um, you guys have probably been hearing a lot about bats in the news lately, so we just wanted to kind of share our collection with you, show you our little guys, um, and then talk to you a little bit about their species as well as bats around the world. So I'll give you guys a quick overview on this individual species. Like Robin said, these are called big brown bats. Like Robin said, these are called big brown bats. Um, and if you are wondering, yes, there are little brown bats. I know these guys seem pretty small already, but they only weigh about 15 to 26 grams each. Who you're looking at right now is our female Henrietta, and she is over 20 grams while our smaller male, Henry over here, is about 16. So their lifespan um, is an average of 6.5 years, but these guys can actually live up to 18 to 20 out in the wild. Ours are about in their mid-20s right now, so we're hoping to get, get them going for a couple more years. So their wingspan, even though they're quite small, can, any, can be anywhere from 12 to 14 inches. Um, these guys like to live in nice warm areas. They go into caves, tunnels, tree cavities. They live under tree bark, attics, and you can even do bat boxes. So if you are interested in having any of these beautiful little nuggets in your yard, you can uh, build your own bat box to, to attract them. So their range, they, these, this spe species specifically is throughout the U.S. Um, Southern Canada, Central America, the Caribbean, and the uppermost countries of South America. It's a pretty wide range for bats, so these guys are um, of least concern on endangered species, um, which is wonderful. Uh, so a little bit more about them. You guys might know, but if you don't, these guys hibernate from November to March in the winter. You wouldn't see them because they're insectivores, and when the insects aren't out, they try and sleep off um, all the fat that they've stored up. So going into the fact that they uh, eat insects, um, a lot of people I know are a little concerned about bats and do they drink blood and all that. These guys specifically eat insects, so um, they're really helpful to farmers because they eat a lot of beetles, flies, um, moths, wasps, and flying ants. Um, their favorite are beetles, though, but it really depends on their um, range in the country of what, what they'll eat most of. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it all, but we have these little little buggies right here. These are called mealworms. That's what we feed them because we can't catch too many flies. It'd be a little difficult since our bats don't fly. They can't catch their own food. Um, but the bats out in the wild go and help farmers out drastically because they uh, catch all the insects that eat um, crops so crop production is really great because of them and um, a lot of farmers actually build bat boxes to attract bats. We have a question somebody asked can these guys fly I know you just mentioned that they can't but do you know why they can't fly? So these guys are here because they're wildlife um, and they were non-releasable so a rehabber got them in for a various amount of reasons um, bats come into rehabbers because they've either been hit by a car, they've gotten stuck in someone's house and they have a broken wing, um, or things like that. And these guys, as Megan mentioned, are quite a bit older, um, so they've kind of gotten used to this lifestyle um, and none of them can fly to begin with. So they actually just like to climb a lot, so you can see here Henrietta is kind of demonstrating her really good climbing ability. Um, and this would be similar to where you'd find them out in the wild on some kind of bark. You can see these little tiny hooks on the end of her feet um, are actually her nails, and that's how she holds on to stuff. So they can actually still get around quite well by climbing, and then that's primarily how our little guys do it. But for these guys out in the wild, they're actually um, one of the fastest bat species, and they can go up to 40 miles an hour. So we're going to talk to you guys a little bit more about the diversity of bats around the world. Um, so there are actually 1,400 plus different species of bats. So that's everything from these little guys that you find in North and South America all the way up to the flying foxes that you would find in Southeast Asia, Africa, and even Australia. Um, and so the things that they eat around the world are bugs, 
larvae. They'll also eat fruits. Um, they'll, they're really good pollinators as well. Um, and then there are three species of bats that you guys may be familiar with that actually eat blood. I believe we have a question. Yes, we have a question from Alina, age five. She's wondering if they have any eyelashes. They actually do. I don't know if you guys can see them. We'll see if Henry will show us his really pretty eyes. You can see how teeny tiny little his eyes are. Um, obviously, since all bats are nocturnal, they don't need really, really big eyes. Um, but he has itty bitty teeny eyelashes. We'll see if we can get a close up picture for you guys and post it on Facebook at some other time. Um, it's a little bit difficult with the camera to be able to really focus on that. But as they are mammals, they do have fur. So you guys can actually appreciate all that beautiful fuzzy fur that he's got over his body. That will help keep him nice and insulated in the winter. Um, as well as he more than likely has itty bitty teeny tiny eyelashes on there as well. Can you tell us a little bit about their ears? Yeah, so these guys actually hunt using what's called echolocation. So they will send out some kind of a noise and it will reverberate back to them and that way they can sort of hear what's in their environment around them. So because they hunt at night, they don't need to be able to see at night. They're actually gonna listen while they hunt. So these guys have very large ears. Um, we'll actually show you some pictures in a couple minutes of the diversity of bat ears. You can see Henrietta, her ears are a little bit bigger than Henry. She is a bigger bat. She's gonna chitter a little bit for you guys. So she's gonna say hello. Um, and we'll actually go show you the pictures. Um, so with bats, they're actually gonna listen with their ears to their environment. So you guys can see the true diversity. You got these guys, which have itty bitty little ears all the way up to some of your bigger bats that have giant ears and different specialties. Um, so you can see the way that their ears are sort of created. They have lots of fur around it that help funnel the noises in as well as different folds in their ears to capture the noises. And you can see a little bit down here how we have some different diversity um, of ears then. Right, we have another question. Uh a couple of people have asked, do they have babies or where do they have babies? They do. So bat birth is very, very, very cool. So we have a picture down here at the end of a bat hanging upside down in a cave. Um, I don't think any of our pictures have bat babies on them, but essentially moms will give birth hanging upside down um, and then the pups will actually crawl out and hang out on mom. Um, they are mammals, like we said, so they do lactate. They have nipples um, and they will nurse um, their pups as well. And they are actually called bat pups, which is kind of cool. So they pretty much do almost everything hanging upside down. They go to the bathroom upside down. Um, the only thing they don't do upside down is flying. I'm gonna add a little note specific to this species. Um, in the spring, these guys are normally pretty solitary, but um, pregnant females come together to roost in the same area for little maternity wards, um, anywhere from 20 to 700 of them at a time. And that a lot of times has to do with um, a pretty cool mammal fact. Um, a lot of different species of mammals will actually give birth together at the same time to up the odds for the survival of their babies. Um, so it's not so much that they care about the other moms that are giving birth, but they wanna make sure that their baby has the best chance to either stay warm in the case of these bats, um, or if you think of larger animals, kind of it would be protection from predators. We have a few questions, so we'll start with the first one that came up. Uh, Jude would like to know, how much do they eat? So what's really cool, especially about the bats that Megan was talking about, so the big brown bats that we have here, so that's Henrietta and Henry, um, they can actually eat many, many, many times their body weight every single night. So our bats weigh, like Megan said, between about 15 and 25 grams each. Um, so if you think about it, they're actually eating several ounces um, or even pounds of insects every single night. Um, there are records of bats essentially disseminating entire insect colonies over the course of a year. So if you guys think about them and you wonder about all those mosquitoes and flies and things like that in your backyard, um, anybody who's living in Virginia right now, you're actually seeing these little guys flying around. Well, not these guys specifically, mm -hmm. but you're seeing our big brown bats um, and other bat species flying around um, your backyards at night. So they're starting to get ready for the heavy insect season. So these guys are amazing for insect control. You want bats in your backyard. Rosa would like to know, what are their biggest predators? So with bats, just given their size, their biggest predators can be any kind of birds of prey, um, really that would be out at night. There are a lot of actually snakes and other animals that will hang out by roosting areas. So they'll hang out outside of caves, um, kind of waiting for bats to come out, especially because they can be pretty predictable. You know they're gonna come out right around nighttime. 
Um, and so it really could be anything essentially that can catch it. It obviously takes quite a bit of skill to be able to catch a bat that can fly up to 40 miles an hour, um, but it is certainly possible. All right, next question. Um, Nicole would like to know, would a bat box help them during an event like the 4th of July? It could potentially, um, since they're gonna be out at night when kind of fireworks and stuff are gonna go off, it is gonna disrupt them a little bit and actually brings up a good point. Um, more so what you guys wanna be worried about instead of those isolated incidents, um, while you do wanna be careful where you are setting off fireworks, don't do it if you know you have a cave or something where bats tend to roost. You guys wanna make sure that at night you're turning off any unnecessary lights because that is very common, especially during migration season, which is right about now, when any of our migratory bats are returning from the south, they could potentially hit into kind of glass and windows and things like that because they cannot actually detect that there is glass there. Okay, we've got lots of good questions coming in, so thank you guys. Keep it up, and if we don't get to the questions during the live stream, we'll go through and answer them in the comment section uh, after the video. But we'll keep going with the questions here. Uh, Alexis would like to know, is the species affected by white nose syndrome? They are, and that is a really good question. So I was actually going to make sure that we got to that if nobody asked for it. So this is a picture of a bat that has white nose syndrome. It's essentially a fungus that you can see grows on their nose. So, of course, as scientists, we're very, very creative at naming our things. So white nose syndrome came about only about 15 or so years ago, in about 2006. It was discovered in some caves um, in Pennsylvania in the northeast United States. Um, and likely what happened is that the reason it spread is because you have cavers, spelunkers, and sadly even us scientists that have gone to cave to cave without properly disinfecting our boots and it actually will spread the fungus. This is a very, very deadly fungus um, and the specifics of it, um, we can go into a little bit more detail in some of the um, answers later, but essentially it just kind of prevents the bats from being able to breathe properly. It prevents them from me being able to store up enough nutrients for winter um, so if they can't make it through the winter, unfortunately, they do die. Um, and because you can see how close bats will often roost together, and um, we've seen a couple pictures of that, you can see how that disease can spread so quickly. It's found, I believe, now in 33 different states. Um, so you guys have to be careful with washing your boots, changing your boots, don't go spelunking or caving, um, especially if you know there's white nose syndrome in the area. Are all bats potentially disease carrying or transmitting or is it just specific species? So as I said before, bats are mammals um, and there are a lot of what we call zoonotic diseases that many different mammals can carry. We can carry them, we can spread them as people, but also bats can. The reason that you guys hear about bats a lot with either rabies um, or any other diseases that are common with bats is because people have a lot of interactions with them. It's very easy for a bat, say, that's traveling 40 miles an hour at night to accidentally find its way into a house or to hit a person by accident since we said they're eyesight is not so good, but usually their echolocation keeps them um, from hitting people and things like that. Um, but because of their size, it is so common for people to get into interactions with them. And oftentimes these guys will accidentally bite someone um, if they're feeling stressed or anything like that. So disease transmission can be a little bit higher with them as well. A couple of people have asked how many bats we have here at the museum. So right now at the museum, we have three. We have Henry, Henrietta, and we have one more bat named Vlad, um, who is a very uncreative name for a bat. Um, he is not a vampire bat, um, but he just thinks he's a little tougher than the other guys, so we gave him an appropriate name to go with that. So we just had big brown bats here at the museum, um, but in Virginia alone, uh, we have quite a few more, um, especially I mentioned this time of year, we're going to have red bats and other different bats that are migrating from the south, whereas big brown bats are resident species, so they're the ones that will hibernate over the winter. All right, I'm going to scroll through, see if I missed any questions in here um, while we head on back over to our bats over here. Somebody asked how old are our bats. I know you mentioned that earlier, but for uh, people who got here late, would you mind recapping? There you go, Henry. There he is. So our bats, it's a little hard to say. We estimate that they're in their lower 20s, um, but because they were from the wild, um, we can never say for sure. Again, they're rehab, non-releasable individuals, which means for whatever reason, they would not be able to survive in the wild um, on their own. You guys are looking at our male, Henry. Um, he's a little bit shyer than our female, so we'll let him kind of go back. And we use these cloths to kind of keep them covered, keep them warm. There's also a heating pad underneath here to keep them warm as well, since they are just kind of coming out of their hibernation. And then we'll go see if Henrietta wants to show her little face. And of course, she went all the way down. Nope, she's <laughs> going to show you her butt. 
So this is our female Henrietta. You guys can appreciate how much bigger she is. Um, she is not overweight. She's not fat. Females are just quite a bit bigger than males. Hazel would like to know if they eat fruit. Our bats do not. Our bats are what you call insectivores. Their favorite foods are beetles, um, and the mealworms we showed you before are actually beetle larvae, um, so it essentially gives them the same protein. There are many bats that do eat fruit, um, and then as I mentioned as well, there are a lot of bats that are pollinators too, so if you guys like bananas or avocado or mango, you are thankful to our bat friends. We have any more questions about our big brown bats, guys? So if you guys have any more questions, you can always go ahead and leave them in the comments. Um, otherwise, I think we're going to log off for now. But we want to thank you guys so much for stopping by and saying hello to Henry and Henrietta. Again, our two resident big brown bats um, at the Virginia Living Museum. Um, and of course, if you guys are feeling like you wanna help these guys out a little bit, um, we do have our emergency fund up and operating um, to be able to continue to care for all of our animals. It does take a lot of money um, and a lot of products to kind of sustain our collection here at the Living Museum of mammals, including our bats. Uh, reptiles, amphibians, fishes, and invertebrates as well. And we also have some lovely birds. Um, so we would love to hear from you guys about how the museum um, is here for you. And then of course, how you guys are always here for us. Then of course, we also have all of our natural education going up on Facebook through our Facebook Lives, as well as Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, and we'll be having our next Instagram, or I'm sorry, our next Facebook Live at 2.30 this afternoon. And I believe we will be seeing some reptiles then as well. So if you guys have any more questions, like I said, you can leave them here. Um, otherwise, we will leave you with a beautiful shot of Henrietta, who's posing for you right now. Have a great day, guys.